we are really pleased to be here and uh, be here again. As you mentioned, this has been a great audience for us, a great platform for us. It always results in some very enjoyable conversations and uh, I'm looking forward to diving into it. Um, I am here with a number of colleagues from BlueCat, and today we're going to be talking about embracing hybrid cloud and specifically some of the challenges that large organizations face when they move to hybrid cloud architectures, specifically around DNS or DDI. Um, real briefly, it's a pretty tight agenda. We're going to get through uh, the basics. I'm going to give a quick introduction to who BlueCat is. We're going to talk about the challenge of hybrid cloud whiteboarding, and that's going to be actually, uh, sorry, challenge of hybrid cloud. And we're going to be doing that through a whiteboarding exercise, probably the best way to demonstrate just the sheer amount of complexity involved. And then we'll spend the majority of our time today actually going through a technical solution demonstration where we actually architect some solutions to those problems. Uh, my name is Jim Williams. I'm the VP of Marketing. I'm joined by several colleagues here, Andrew Workin, our Chief Strategy Officer, Scott Penny, our VP of Strategy. And of course, Dana Skoldsky heads up our corporate communications. So let me uh, <clears throat> just jump into it. A quick introduction to BlueCat for those of you who have not been on one of these in the past, might not know us. Uh, our mission is to ensure digital connectivity between users and applications. It basically allows business to function. Actually, more than business. We have, we have uh, customers that are in a variety of verticals, not just business, many in education, government, et cetera. Um, we're headquartered in Toronto. Uh, but we have offices kind of scattered throughout the world. We're about 370 employees and we serve uh, around 850 customers today. We put an incredible amount of focus on how we serve those customers. We're quite proud of our net promoter score, which is a measure of customer satisfaction. It's uh, averaging 80 over the last year, which is pretty exceptional in the IT industry. And we, we get there because uh, we spend a lot of time engaging with our customers, not just pre-sales, but post-sales. Um, the people that use our products are dealing with mission critical infrastructure. They want to have someone on the other end of the phone, not just for support, but sometimes for guidance, sometimes for strategy. We spend a lot of times in organizations like user groups, customer advisory boards, and actually one of our most successful uh, platforms recently is Network VIP, which is a growing Slack channel. I encourage anyone that's in the networking uh, market or industry to join Network VIP and, and engage in the conversation. Finally, we were founded in 2000. The company's been around a bit. We're owned by a private equity firm. Uh, we're about $100 million uh, and uh, experiencing some real growth. I'll talk to you a little bit about what's driving that growth. Everybody's got to have their NASCAR slide. We're no different. I can't help it. I'm a marketer. The short story with this slide is that we work with some of the largest organizations in the world. Some of the biggest companies, well-known brands, uh, about 50% of our customer base is north of 50,000 employees as organizations. So large, sprawling, complex, many offices, many regions. Um, it's fairly well represented, fairly evenly distributed across a core set of 10 industries. Um, you know, software, uh, government is really big for us. Um, I, I mentioned healthcare, education, and financial services, of course, is a real, real big area for us as well. Um, what these companies have in common is that uh, prior to working with Blue Cat, they were mired in, uh, in the bowels of complexity, especially around DNS and DDI more specifically. So those of you unfamiliar, DDI stands for DNS. DHCP and IP address management is an acronym of acronyms. Why are they mired in this complexity? Well, many organizations, even some of these very large, well-known consumer brands, they've been around a long time. They're actually at the heart of their network. They're running on basically freeware to manage their DNS. It's either uh, Microsoft DNS that, that came with Windows Server, or in many cases, they're using open source solutions like Bind. Um, and frankly, while those uh, solutions were good enough to get them started, they're not, they're not good enough for the grown-ups, right? So as these organizations take on digital transformation strategies, they want to move to the cloud, they want to implement SD-WAN, maybe they have an IoT strategy, they want to take on more uh, better uh, security uh, and compliance uh, regimes, 
They just find that that kind of old school DDI that they started with can't keep up and it creates real problems across the network. Um, the old solutions are kind of stuck in the data center. They're not at the edge where the action is. Uh, they're inherently unsecure. I'm gonna talk about that. They're manually configured bespoke uh, configurations that are done uh, manually, usually by uh, experts in the arcane arts of uh, DNS configuration. And that results in you know, things that many of these IT organizations don't wanna talk about, but errors, conflicts, downtime. And if you've ever experienced a DNS outage, you know that that is extremely painful. You know, the lights flicker and go out and it takes a while to figure out exactly what went wrong. Okay, obviously slow pace of change, it hinders innovation and it creates more risk for these organizations. So these are, these are kind of the problems with the old school approach. We offer something we call adaptive DNS. Best way to think about it is DDI uh, for the age of hybrid cloud, right? It's uh, dynamic, it scales. Uh, infinitely, it's an open API driven uh, approach, uh, much more secure, more security controls, more security analytics, uh, as I said, highly scalable and uh, kind of uh, operates at machine speed, not human speed, right? Automation is the name of the game when it comes to network configuration. Um, and this is our solution for helping these organizations thrive in a complex world. We solve really four key challenges for these organizations. The first one and the most important is it's just got to work. It's got to be on, always on, uh, no matter what's being thrown at it. Um, these companies like DNS systems uh, deal with massive scale, massive, massive volumes of DNS queries flowing through their networks. Um, and it's got to be uh, inherently scalable and resilient. Because um, we talked about the, the damages that outages do. Um, finally, or, or more importantly, uh, it's got to be able to help them manage risk. Uh, this is a fairly well-known stat. I'm not afraid to use it again. 91% of malware uses DNS for command and control. The SolarWinds, SolarGate, SolarFlare, whatever you want to call it, massive uh, incident that made headlines uh, was a perfect example of how they use DNS for command and control for these, for these things, right? So uh, this needs to be uh, locked down. Uh, I'll also say that DNS, because of the ubiquity of the service, is a great control plane. It's also an indicator of intent, right? Every single device connected to a network uses DNS uh, and how, uh, what the device is and what they're trying to access and when it occurred um, and what they're querying is, is a huge, huge clue for security teams. Uh, they're trying to pick up speed, move faster. Uh, a lot of the customers we talk to um, are you know up to thirty percent of their time is 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 servicing DNS tickets, configuring IP zones, etc. It's just not fast enough, and in many cases, people that run DNS systems feel like they're holding up the pace of change in their organization. So we need to address that. And finally, the one that we'll focus on today is about moving to hybrid cloud architectures. All three of the one, uh, of the problems I just talked about are combined when it comes to hybrid uh, cloud, uh, hybrid architectures, and we're going to dig into some of that. These are the four challenges that our customers face when they come to embracing the cloud. Um, and the, the, the problems that they, the challenges they face kind of manifest them in so many ways. It's, it's far beyond just technical. Uh, we just did a, a massive survey of, of our buyers and which indicated that uh, you know, only 28% uh, of people that are moving to the cloud consider those strategies to be successful today. And many experience operational challenge, security and compliance challenges, et cetera. So why do they face these challenges? Really comes down to these four reasons, right? The team responsible for the functioning of DNS in the organization has zero visibility or control over what's happening in the cloud. They can't see how IP addresses are being provisioned. They are not responsible for the zones. Um, and that lack of visibility and control introduces all types of challenges around uh, conflicts and errors and downtime, et cetera. Um, these two uh, kind of areas between what's on-prem and in the cloud are siloed from one another, right? That's what threatens that zone conflict uh, and that needs to be resolved. Um, they can't uh, orchestrate the rapid change required by cloud teams, so they struggle to keep up with the pace of change being driven by cloud. And then finally, in order to make uh, DNS query and query paths work, 
uh, DDI teams end up spending a lot of time building these custom DNS forwarding uh, rules. And it just creates a, a, a tangled rat's nest of complexity that when something does go wrong, wow, you gotta, you gotta spend a bunch of time trying to debug it to fix that problem, okay? So these are really the challenges we're gonna talk about today. Of course, our solutions is to give better visibility and control to extend authoritative DNS from the data center to the cloud, uh, to now enable these network teams, DDI teams to, to operate at speed with agility that the cloud uh, organization demands, um, and to offer some degree of simplicity to cut through that tangled mess of, of DNS forwarding and routing rules. So these are kind of the solutions that we're gonna provide. Uh, and uh, my colleagues are gonna walk through those in more detail. There's really three products that Blue Cat uh, provides that are at work today and the solutions we're gonna describe. Blue Cat Integrity, that kind of middle layer, is our flagship product. That is the DDI solution. It's comprised of a management plane, management uh, um, uh, solution, which is called the Blue Cat Address Manager. And then the actual execution uh, uh, the servers that actually uh, run DNS and DHCP. Um, that is kind of the core solution. We have applications we build on top of that. One is called Blue Cat Discovery and Visibility, which allows networking teams to actually discover what's happening in real time in the cloud and reconcile that with what's in the data center. And finally, we're gonna talk about Blue Cat Edge, which is our DNS resolver. It's a hybrid solution itself that enables uh, DDI teams to uh, set up forwarding rules uh, that ensure that uh, end users and applications can get to the destination trying to reach quickly uh, and efficiently. 